Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name's Dan and for the last few years I've been building an open source companion robot using the Raspberry Pi. This is build log 5 in a series of videos where I've been upgrading it to use the Raspberry Pi 5 along with a custom PCB and a brand new 3D printed head. In this video I want to talk a little bit about the construction of the head and how everything is being assembled uh, and looking at next steps from this point forward. So for those of you who've been following the series, you'll know that I've built a custom PCB which has surface mounted NeoPixels. They are then connected to a NeoPixel I. Uh, we also have space for a microphone, an amplifier for sound. Uh, we have a motion sensor which uses microwave motion sensing and a buzzer for sound output as well. On the other side of the head, you can see we have the DC to DC converter, which takes the power input either from a USB-C plugged into the head or the power coming through from the body. And then we also have a servo connected to an antenna, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. As you can probably see, it's taken quite a few prints to get to this point in the design. So let's take a look at the 3D model and see how we got from there to here. This is the current design as things stand, and I am planning on continuing to work on this. But first, let's talk about the earlier versions. When I initially started building this, I wanted to make a head that was quite easy to assemble and was really fixed in terms of the layout. So this is the Raspberry Pi 5. The active cooling module is missing, so you would have that on top here. And then we have our custom PCB, which actually connects with right angle header pins, which aren't shown here. I then have the DC to DC converter and connecting all of those together is a single board underneath which then connects the DC to DC converter and the Pi and then the Pi connects the headers. Which allows the DC to DC converter to be mounted to the same frame as the Raspberry Pi. I then decided to include an additional print that would connect the camera and the NeoPixel eye to that main frame. This allowed me to move it to left and right to adjust the position slightly, but besides that, there was no other flexibility in this design at all. I also wanted to be able to include a speaker, and therefore I created a mount underneath the Raspberry Pi to be able to house the speaker and some of the other smaller components, such as the USB charging. It also gave me the flexibility to be able to mount the servo in that component as well, and then print everything out as a single piece. I did this for the first version, but unfortunately, when assembled, I didn't really have the look and feel that I'd like. When I created the body, I created a modular approach that uses different levels as plates and then spacer and standoff screws in order to mount those different levels at different heights. And then once those were in place, then there were detachable panels that could be fit to the front and sides and back in order to close up any of the gaps and add any of the additional components that were needed. I quite liked this design as it was clean and it was easy to modify depending on the changing requirements of the project. So I set about to work on something similar for the head. The current design utilizes the same approach, although slightly more complex than the body. So let's break it down and talk you through it. I started very simply with the idea of having a lower, middle and upper frame that all of the components would connect to in the same way as they do with the body. You can see here that all I've done is create two millimeter components that I could print really quickly and then added holes so that I could attach all of the relevant components that I'd like to. So there are spaces for the Raspberry Pi to be screwed in, spaces in the corner so that the standoff screws can be screwed in, and then there's even a space for the speaker to be mounted at the bottom with a slight recess so it can then be hot glued into place. I also added the ability to drop in the USB-C port sideways uh, here and then also included a space for any wiring that needs to go out and go down to the body. In order to prototype this design I actually just used a sheet of cardboard cut to the right size and then designed around the components that I had on the table. I find that 3D printing, although rapid, is quite difficult to get a feel for exactly how things are going to fit. So being able to prototype with something like cardboard gives me a good feel for where things are on the board and whether there's going to be any obstructions. For example, there have been quite a few reprints where I didn't anticipate that a screw head was going to be as thick as it was and it actually blocked the installation of a specific component like the servo. Once I had this design in place, 
I started printing and started assembling the board. Then I was able to rebuild the face and the other component mounts that would go around these connected to the spacers. You can see here the component that connects the NeoPixel I with a gap for the connector to exit and then the CSI camera where the ribbon cable would go down underneath and loop through this slit in the plastic and then back up and into the Raspberry Pi which is inside there. It also gives me flexibility to be able to modify any of these components without needing to reprint the entire thing which would have been the case for the previous design. I added the DC to DC power converter and connected that to the bottom row which is slightly recessed from the top. I actually included a gap to allow that to penetrate the middle layer as well. And then above that I added the servo mount component. So the servo for the ear is connected through this gap. Holes can be added in here to connect it with screws and then the ear can be connected directly to the servo while still allowing space for that DC to DC component. One of the key ideas behind this design is also that the components are all visible because this is primarily something that I'll take to events and talk to people about. It's useful to be able to see all of the components that are mounted within. Whereas with the previous head version, everything was buried underneath layers of 3D printed plastic. In this version, I can point to all of the discrete components and talk about what it is they do and how they work. Once I had mounted the upper panel, I realized that in real life it looked quite boxy. And so what I wanted to do was make it so that it was slightly lower down and included more space to expose more of the components. So I created a new version, which is the reduced frame. This exposes more of the Raspberry Pi and then also allows for more heat ventilation. The ear component mounts to the servo using a standard servo horn and then has a second piece which push fits in that mounts the antenna. This means that the ear with the antenna can move 180 degrees in order to animate and emote as necessary. There's also a functional purpose behind the antenna, which I'll talk about soon. One of the other ideas I had was to build this as a very basic skeleton so that I could add additional components in order to make the face look different depending on various requirements. And one of the things that I've done in order to test that is add a secondary print, which is the lens connector. So the NeoPixel fits within this white component and then we have a cabochon which fits within the blue. Both of those were included in the previous version in a different format. The next steps would be to continue working on the design and fill in the areas that I haven't printed yet while still allowing for the visibility of the components. So if you have any ideas, feel free to send them over. As you can see, all of this has since been assembled. I decided to keep the same connector that connects the head to the body, and that is simply four small screws that connect directly to the servo mounted in the neck. I also wanted to make sure that the connection to the body, which supplies the power and data, could be disconnected and reconnected easily without connecting the wires the wrong way around and causing a short. For that reason, I decided to use a JST connector. I've also used JST connectors for the connection between the PCBs on either the custom PCB or any of the other modules. This also gives me a really interesting opportunity with the custom PCB. You can see here we have three disconnected JSTs. Now the reason for that is that there can be additional modules created and added to the board to extend the functionality. There is a 3 volt, 5 volt and an I squared C extension. So if you are looking to add a laser pen or a new display or any number of smaller additional modules, you can build them and plug them in to these connectors to increase the functionality. I have a few ideas for this and I'll probably cover that in future videos. You can see here that the microphone and amplifier modules have not been connected yet. The reason for that is I created a test board initially and you'll see that in a previous video. The test board was to connect both of those modules and check that they actually worked before I integrated them fully into the board. Unfortunately the software for those modules is still being updated to work with the Raspberry Pi 5 and so it's unlikely that I'll be adding those and getting those working soon. I will keep testing and once the software has been updated I'll be able to put them in place and hopefully use them as intended. 
you can see that USB-C power board that I was talking about. And the idea is that you either connect power directly to the head through this USB-C, or you connect power from the body via the JST connectors. It's important to remember that we need to remove the JST connection if the power is being supplied directly to the head, otherwise we might end up with problems. I wanted to talk about the ear in more detail as well. I've been quite proud of the fact that most of the pieces that are installed on this robot are functional, and the function is the priority rather than the form. And so the idea of having an ear that could animate just for the sake of animation um, didn't really sit very well with me. The antenna itself is connected in so that the port is actually pointing outwards, and it can be extended, and then it is actually able to rotate on the servo. So the Raspberry Pi has direct control of this one, as opposed to the other servos which are connected via the Arduino. That means that even if the head is disconnected and being powered manually, the servo can still control the antenna. But what is it for? Well, this is a small software-defined radio module. I bought this about six months ago, and I've been connecting it directly to my laptop in order to intercept radio signals. The reason why you might want to do this is because it allows you to scan certain radio frequencies, maybe listen to the radio on your device that wouldn't ordinarily have that level of access. But it also allows you to do more so for example, if you have a weather station or a mobile temperature sensor or uh, any number of other devices, a lot of them will broadcast on a frequency that you can intercept with this module. And it allows you to get a reading on what temperature it is in your detached building where the sensor is located, but you're not. It can also be used on certain home security systems to detect when doors are open and that kind of thing. And really, initially, that was the idea that I had for this, was being able to build something that would monitor my own home security system independent of the system itself. I never quite got to that point, but this is a really interesting opportunity to try something out with detecting radio signals and interpreting the data. If you're interested in this kind of thing, I might do a video about it later on, so let me know in the comments. So the way that this would work is you can plug this device into the USB port in the back of the Raspberry Pi and using a flexible connector can connect the module itself to the antenna. And then as a little added bonus, when the servo moves the antenna, it can fine tune the signal connected to the Raspberry Pi. I'm really pleased with how this design has worked so far as it gives me a lot of flexibility for improvements. I'm not much of a designer though, so if you'd like to contribute a design to this project, feel free. You can share files directly with me via the community, link in the description. As far as the next steps go, I'm going to continue working on the design and I'm going to 3D print a few more pieces to get this finished off. Then it's onto the software. I'm really excited about the opportunity that some software frameworks might offer this, and I'm looking to explore that more fully in the new year. If you'd like to get involved in the project, feel free to join the community, and you can follow more frequent updates on my other social media accounts. Links in the description. Thanks for watching.